a lot of disturbance at the Brave Beaters HQ lately because I bought a contender for the Rolex Explorer 1. So, there are two now. Hmm. Another Explorer's watch is in my collection next to the iconic Rolex Explorer 1. This is the Nevada Super Antarctic, an adventurous watch which covers basically the same watch profile type. So a redundant purchase, hmm. So yeah, was this purchase needed after I acquired the Rolex Explorer 1? Probably 90% of the people would have said no. But I was always drawn and intrigued by the appeal of the Super Antarctic, when I discovered the watch on their Instagram page while I was talking the Pac-Man. So let's discover this watch and see in the end if one of these two beauties needs to go. And believe it or not, this Super Antarctic was resurrected thanks to the Instagram community of Nevada, where some collectors shared their vintage Super Antarctics, making the brand to be reactive to the idea of launching this model. And in the same way, Nevada is recently working on the Chronomaster Paul Newman and the exciting F77 model, both being crowdsourced and endorsed by the fans. Now as faith, for some reason it wasn't meant to be to receive this watch from Nevada. At some point it was a mistake somewhere and instead of the Antarctic I received the Chronomaster for review. But a week ago I found this model on the local market as pre-owned for a good price, so this is how I got it. What do I actually bought? Well, an iconic field or explorer's watch with a similar heritage as the crowned one. Because this is indeed a modern reissue of the Aquamatic Super Antarctic made in the 50s. And the concept Aquamatic associated to the bottom of the Nevada brand stands for waterproof and automatic. So Nevada created around 1957 the Antarctic model for the US Navy which went to the Antarctic under the operation Deep Freeze to the South Pole. So this watch is truly dedicated to adventurers or mountaineering, offering a small, robust waterproof, legible and anti-magnetic wristwatch, meant to withstand any difficulties or weather conditions. And today the watch is reimagined in a bigger size, with modern finishings and materials. The Super Antarctic sits on a common chassis of 38mm with the Antarctic Spider. This beautiful case with a twist on the lugs is not faithful to the vintage 35mm version, and the brand decided to keep only the dial layout from the original model. The multifaceted case is very cool indeed, we have a beautiful vintage inspired brush silhouette with a discreet polished chamfer on the bottom, a brushed angled surface towards the ends of the lugs, and then some interesting polished chamfers on the interior part of the lugs. And in my opinion this is an inspired decision because looking side by side at both models, the Super Antarctic offers more angles and facets that create a multi-dimensional volume. So you truly have what you see on this Super Antarctic. And on the case back there is also a beautiful gold painted and embossed medallion celebrating the historic trips to Antarctica. Which reminds me of the vintage iconic King and Grand Seikos, where on the Explorer so both the Antarctic and the Explorer are part of the same watch genre. They are field watches, although I feel the need to have a dedicated subcategory for this mountaineering type. Because I see them pretty different, with a focus on legibility, loomed dials and anti-magnetic features, which feels a bit different than the blasted dirty dozens like field watches discreetly loomed. I don't know, what do you think? Do you feel that they should be part of the same field watch DNA? Now in terms of which one was first, the chicken or the egg? The Super Antarctic has a striking similar dial layout as the Explorer. Having some sort of a common design language with the Explorer, the Smiths, Everest, the Seiko Alpinist, the Anycar Serpa, the Vulcan Cricket or the JLC Geophysic. But out of this list, the Super Antarctic has one of the best dials in my opinion, because I love the repetition of the triangle at 12, 3, 6 and 9 against the minute baguettes. However, a thing to notice, the triangle at 12 o'clock is bigger than the other ones. Well, that didn't help me to read the time upside down a couple of times. But I think it is kind of cool because it is still one of the most legible dials I've ever had. Another cool accent is the preciousness of the dial, which is obtained through the metal that surrounds the minute markers and the hands, giving a premium feeling. From the front, the accents are muted and we can read the patina loomed markers, where the metallic outlines can be barely spotted. But when the watch is angled, the metal is flashing, ensuring a better legibility, especially against the matted black dial. Now as hands layout, we have a similar Rolex Explorer composition, with the hour hand in a Mercedes shape but without the split on the lollipop, which is still iconic for the Nevada branding, as well as the sword hand with an isolated tip. Now, loom-wise, Nevada offers great quality loom for their creations, and in this case there is no exception. 
we have the big surface triangles, the minute markers and the hands and because of the longer triangle from 12 o'clock position we can spot if the watch is positioned correct in low light conditions. And as reference to the past, Nevada kept their logo faithful to the original one with the Aquamatic sub-label. And on the bottom we have a handwritten Super Antarctic label and underneath 23 rubies. This is a vintage annotation of the caliber capability where on the vintage model it was written 21 rubies according to the old caliber features. And speaking about capabilities, the Nevada Grunchen Super Antarctic measures 38mm in diameter with a lug to lug of 45mm, a height of 11mm, a lug width of 20mm and weights 80 grams. So a very very comfortable watch to wear. <laughs> Believe it or not, the watch has a screw down crown signed by the brand which ensures 20 ATM aka 200 meters. So diving capabilities here. We have a box sapphire crystal with a blue hue that creates beautiful distortions when the watch is angled. And inside we have the automatic Soprod Caliber P024, which I believe is an ETA 2824-2 alternative with a date option and similar specs. And the price is positioned around 750 Swiss francs. So I would conclude that the brand offers great value for the money asked. Now as strap options I bought the Super Antarctic from my local market as pre-owned, so the watch came on a brown leather option. Very good in my opinion, it is surprisingly flexible for its thickness and extremely soft as well. And by the way, at any watch purchase from the Nevada website, you can receive a strap or a bracelet and after you add the watch to the cart, you have to choose the desired strap and then on the coupon area, you should add the code BRAVEBEATERS hash strap and pay only for the watch. The link is in the description. And a summer option, I wear this Super Antarctic on this premium Tiffany turquoise strap from Gentil Handmade. And besides the fresh color, I love the pattern which looks like long tropical leaves which adds more personality and elegance through pattern and color, especially on a black dial watch. And Gentil Handmade does a lot of premium tailored straps around the Omega Speedmaster line and also for their standard clasps. So if interested, gentilhandmade.com, the link is in the description as well. Now if we put the Explorer and the Antarctic together, even though there are just 2.5mm in difference, it feels that the Super Antarctic feels a bit big for a 38mm field watch and that is happening because of the dial size, where the Explorer is still a bit too small as we discussed on the previous episodes. Concluding that an ideal size for an Explorer watch, at least for me, should measure somewhere between 36.5mm and 37mm with 20mm between the lugs. And as comfort because of the reduced weight and size, the Super Antarctic is very comfortable and thin. It is simply an awesome watch to wear in any circumstances, especially because of the higher depth rating of 200m and the loomed layout which makes it legible in any conditions. And this is definitely a brave beater on the channel. And the Nevada Grenchen Super Antarctic qualifies as a brave beater, taking the position number 38 in the Hall of Fame alongside the Depth Master and the Chrono Master. Now, to decide if one of these two watches should go, honestly, if I have to compare them, I see the Explorer and the Super Antarctic very close but different in the same time. One is bigger, more legible and vintage inspired. The other one is smaller, more refined and iconic. So I don't feel the need to sell one of these watches because they offer different experiences when worn. So nobody leaves the building. <laughs> and I'm also interested to know what's your view on this Super Antarctic. Also what is your favorite field watch made for mountaineering? Please let me know in the comments section. And as usual if you're new here, please consider subscribing for future episodes. Thank you very much, thanks for watching. And until next time, be brave, mom. Stay safe.